Okay, so it's skill number six, rationalizing the denominator. And we're gonna try and talk about what this actually means here. So it says that it is much easier to add and subtract fractions which have integer denominators. This one does not have an integer denominator, it's got something absurd down here. And so we often want to find equivalent fractions which have a rational rather than a third denominator. So right now, when you have one over root two, the denominator is currently irrational. If you remember right back in the first video, thirds are not rational. The opposite of being not rational, sorry, the opposite of being rational is irrational. And so you can see this phrase that we've got here, rationalizing the denominator. It means you're gonna get the denominator and we no longer want it to be a third. We want to make it something that is rational, which just means that it's gonna be an integer, basically. It could be a fraction, but we actually just want it to be an integer here. Now, if you think about what happens with fractions, if you take any fraction, I don't know, say three quarters, if you multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, let's say timesing it by two, you'd get six over eight, which is an equivalent fraction. So as long as you multiply the fraction by the same on the numerator and the denominator, you would keep the fraction equivalent. So we just need to think, what would we multiply this fraction by on the numerator and denominator? Well, if I multiply the top by root two, and if I multiply the bottom by root two, we're gonna change the denominator from something that is irrational to something that's rational. So the numerator would simply become one times root two, which is root two, and the denominator would simply be root two multiplied by root two, and root two times root two is two. Now, this is perfectly fine to stop here, but for those of you who are thinking, cool, I probably might go on to do A level, this is root two divided by two, but equally, you could think of this as a half multiplied by root two. I just wanted to point out that a half of root two written like this, or root two multiplied by a half, is equivalent to root two divided by two, which is also equivalent to one over root two. And I can show you this on the calculator. If I type on the calculator one over the square root of two, it's gonna give me if I do it, and oh, it doesn't do it on my calculator, most calculators would show that these are the same thing. So I'll do the other version. I'll do root two divided by two, or root two over two, I should do. And you'll see that the numbers that we have, 0 0.707, are equivalent to each other. I expect your calculator, if you type in one over root two, it will probably output root two over two. So this is really more of a non-calculator skill that we're going to be looking at here. So to rationalize the denominator, we will multiply the fraction by root a over root a. Remember this thing here is just one. This would be if you had something like, I don't know, b over root a, you would multiply it by root a over root a. So let's have a look at doing some examples here. I have these four, and then you're going to have a go at doing these ones. So for this first fraction that I've got, I'm gonna multiply it by root five over root five. The numerator will be three root five, and the denominator will just be five. You could, if you wanted to, write this as three fifths root five, but probably the most common way is three root five over five. Now this one, I'm gonna rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root two over root two. Remember, you're not actually changing this number because you're timesing it by one, and when you time something by one, it doesn't change size. So you get eight root two divided by two. Now you can actually simplify this because if you have this fraction part here, I'm just really concentrating on this part. Eight divided by two is just four over one or just four. So it is just four root two. So eight divided by root two is four root two. So let's have a look at this one here. Now, we have just got this part, this root three. So I'm only gonna multiply the top and bottom by root three over root three. The numerator is three root three. The bottom, the denominator is four times root three times root three. Root three times root three is three. So it's three times four, which is 12. Now this bit here that we have at the beginning is three twelfths. You can simplify three twelfths by dividing the top and bottom by three. So I could cancel that with this and replace it with a four. If you don't like the way I've done that, you could just simplify the three twelfths to one over four or just root three over four by dividing the top and bottom of the fraction by three.
Again, if you wanted to, you could write this as a quarter root three, but like I said before, it's most common to write it in that way that I've just done there. Okay, this one is gonna multiply by root six and root six. We get 12 root six in the numerator, and on the denominator, we have a five times of six from these two. Five times six is 30. And again, we're just gonna to want to simplify this section of the fraction. You can spot that both the 12 and the 30 are in the six times table. So if I divide the top by six and the bottom by six, I get two root six over five. So you've got these four questions to have a go at here. Pause the video and have a go and see if you get the same answers as me. Okay, so in this first one, we're just gonna multiply by root seven over root seven. That's gonna be four root seven over seven. And this part of the fraction, four over seven, it's already in its simplest form. So we're just gonna leave it there. Now this one's interesting. I wonder if you can guess what this one is gonna be without rationalizing the denominator. You have five and you're dividing it by the square root of five. Think if you can guess what it would be before doing this process, because you could actually answer this logically without doing what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna multiply by root five over root five. We get five root five over five, and those fives cancel, because multiplying by five and dividing by five is the same thing. So you just get root five. Well, that does make sense actually, because if you think about it, root five times root five is equal to five, so if you divide by this root 5 that we have here, you get root 5 is equal to 5 divided by root 5. So if you ever have the, the number divided by its square root, you'll just get its square root. Hopefully that makes some logical sense. So I'm going to multiply this one by root 6 over root 6. So the numerator is 4 root 6. We then have the 3 times the 6 here. So it's going to be 3 times 6, that's 18. And I'm going to simplify that 4 over 18 to be 2 over 9. So 2 root 6 over 9, and that can't simplify any further. And then this last one is just going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. The numerator is therefore going to be 16 root 2. And the denominator is the 3 times the root 2 times root 2. That's 3 times 2, which is 6. And the 6 over 16 is just going to simplify by half the top and bottom to 8 root 2 over 3. And you should be able to check these answers on your calculator. So that's your introduction to rationalizing the denominator. What you're going to see for skill number 7 is rationalizing the denominator, which is more complex when you have something that looks like this. That's coming up in the next video. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.